Like most applications, Premiere keeps track of the operations that we've exercised in time and gives us the ability to undo or redo operations. And like most applications, you would simply click Ctrl Z on Windows or Command Z on the Mac to undo or Ctrl Shift Z or Command Shift Z to redo an operation. So nothing really fancy here except that Premiere also provides a visual representation of all operations, and this is extremely handy when you need to get back to a previous state of your project. In this short tutorial, I'm covering a simple yet extremely useful feature, and this is the History panel. The History panel maintains a list of the changes you are making to your project, and you can use the History panel to jump back to any previous state of your project. I am Benoit Farin for benexplorer.com. If you find my tutorials useful, then don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future tips and tutorials. And if you already are a subscriber, then click the little bell icon so you get notified of future videos. Let's jump into it. All right, so for this exercise, I opened the project, the history panel. You can download the project files if you want to follow exactly what I am doing here, but you can also just create a sample project and from that replicate my steps. So to undo the last operation, you can simply click Ctrl Z or Command Z on the Mac, or you can navigate to the edit menu and select undo. And to undo a series of operations, you would simply click Ctrl Z or Command Z several times. So nothing fancy here. This functionality is supported by most Windows and Mac applications. The History panel provides a visual of all the operations that Premiere has recorded in time. And this is very handy if you want to go back in time to a certain operation, for example. So let's open the History panel, go to Window, select History. Now, what we see here are the actions I operated on my project. You will see a different list based on the actions you performed on your own project. Actually, the list can be empty if you didn't apply any effect or made no changes since you opened your project. So you can see that the last operation I did was a ripple edit and I trimmed a clip. I edited several parameters here. In fact, I added three keyframes. I achieved a couple of razor cuts here and here, and I applied an effect and so on. So I will undo the last operation. Just keep an eye on that last clip and on the list of operations in the History panel. OK, I navigate to Edit, and now I select Undo, and notice that I undid the Ripple Edit at the head of the last clip, and now the last operation, Ripple Trim, is grayed out from the list. See here? The operation is still listed, but it turns gray. It's undone. I will redo this operation, navigate to Edit, select Redo, and now the operation is enabled again in the history and the head of the last clip is trimmed. Now let's say that I want to get back to this point at the time I applied this effect. I could click multiple undos and check the status in the history panel, but instead all I need to do is click here on the apply effect command. Notice that the clips on the timeline have changed, and in fact all these operations, which are now grayed out, have been undone. I can redo several of them just by clicking here on the first razor command, for instance. See? The commands between apply effect and razor have been reapplied, and the clip bikers on street is cut again. Let's try this again, and to get visual feedback on the commands we are about to undo, I'll first move the current time indicator toward the end of Forest Bike, 
and I make sure it is selected. And now what I'm about to do is click on the third edit parameter here. Just before I click on this comment, notice that the previous comments here are grayed out. Check also the effects panel for this script. The opacity is set to 100%. Okay, I click on the third edit parameter comment. Those comments are undone. Check the clip. The opacity was changed. And check the effects panel we have three keyframes that are now changing the opacity over time. It's important to note that the redo list, that is the operations that are marked in gray, only remain available until I apply a new operation. So if I click back on the first apply effect action, those operations now consist as my redo operation list and they can be redone unless I apply a new operation. So for example, if I select the razor tool and I make a cut here, check the redo list as I apply a razor command here. See, the undo stack is reset and the razor operation is now the last operation recorded. If I undo, I hit Ctrl Z or Command Z, then that last operation, the razor I just applied, isn't done. If I undo again, then the previous command apply effects isn't done. The history panel is a very useful way to get back in time or to a specific point of your workflow. Note that the history panel is not saved with your project. So if I save and then reopened this project, then the history panel would be cleared. Similarly, if I revert this project, navigate to file, select revert, and uh, I will hit yes to discard the changes, then the history panel is cleared and will only show the last operation, which is the fact that I opened the project. So I hope that this gives you a good overview of the history panel, and I do advise you to use it often, as it does provide the means to navigate through the operations that you applied to your project over time. In the next tutorial, we will import assets into a brand new project and we will use different editing techniques including insert edits, overwrite edits and the three-point edits.